It's time for the Skinner Auto Group road trip. On our way through the snow to Delgeville, we stop in to see what's new with Roger at Skinner Auto in Herkimer. He is eager to show us their new wheel alignment laser diagnostic system and invites our audience in for a free alignment check the month of January. Richard was feeling like a kid again, having fun plowing the lot with Roger in a new Ford F-250, making easy work of the snow. What we can see. We head east to Little Falls and north up Route 167 to Dowlgeville. Dowlgeville is divided by the East Canada Creek. This water supply attracted the first settlers in the late 1700s. A bridge built over the creek gave the village its first names, Greens Bridge and then Brockett's Bridge. Alfred Dowlge arrived in uh, Brockett's Bridge in 1874 for the purpose of finding lumber to supply his piano factories down in New York City. Upon coming up here, he found the wonderful water resource that we have with the East Canada Valley Creek and the plentiful lumber supply and decided that he was going to purchase a bankrupted tannery and begin a business up here. He bought lumber mills, he started uh, the felting factory, and these were all for the purpose of making essential parts for pianos. When it was all over and done with, he had started felting factories, a woolen mill, uh, brought in the first hydroelectric power dam and um, the Edison Dynamo to provide electricity to the village of Delgeville. We asked if Alfred Delge's mill made piano sounding boards why Delgeville is known for shoes. There was a worker at one of uh, Alfred Delge's felting factory who took scraps of the felt and made some shoes. He then went to two brothers who ran a general store here in Dalgeville, William and Daniel Green. He showed them these foot coverings that he had made and the Greens owning a general store said, aha, maybe we've got something going here. And they proposed to Alfred Dalge uh, to make shoes make felt shoes, make slippers, and during the first year of uh, manufacturing, they created over 600 pairs of shoes. It became the first location in the United States where felt was used to make shoes and slippers. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Daniel Green Company was here as a major employer in Delgeville uh, right up until the early 1990s. Now this building that we're in right now is a direct result of Alfred Dalge's uh, largesse to the village of Dalgeville. This was the Alfred Dalge Hose Company number one and it housed of course all the fire equipment and one of the things that's uh, rather interesting is we do have all of the fire equipment and, and the switch box uh, that were used uh, from the mid-1880s uh, straight through until the 1950s when a new fire company was, uh, was built. When you come to Dowlgeville, be sure to make time to visit their museum. And uh, you'll find, for example, what advertising was like back in the 1800s. And you'll get a close-up look at what shoes used to be like when they were made with real felt. The Dowlgeville Mannheim Museum is open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 to 3 and Saturdays from 10 to noon. The Dowlgeville Mill was home to Daniel Green Shoe Company through 1999. The magnificent building is now home to a variety of businesses, including Central New York's largest indoor year-round gallery of antiques, furniture, art and collectibles. It is open during the winter on Saturdays and Sundays from 10 to 5. It's been a long time. If you're looking for a little escape from the winter climate, you can visit the tropics at Linden Lion Greenhouses. Here you'll find hundreds of varieties of African violets, as well as exotic orchids, begonias, and other tropical plants. Bring the sun that shines down. We've been here to the Linden Lion Greenhouse several times before, but being now that it's winter, you can't help but come here and come inside of the building and feel that you're in a tropical jungle. The warmth is just overwhelming. And then today I also found out that they have the smallest uh, African violet on the planet, and it's right here 
it kind of takes me back because when I was a teenager, I was called a teeny bopper. Well, that's what this African violet is called. It's a teeny bopper. Believe it or not, teeny boppers like this one can find their way all around the world to places like Russia, China, uh, Japan, and they come from right here in Dowsville, New York. The Linden Lion Greenhouses are open every day except Sunday and are located down Van Buren Street off of Main Street. You walk four miles along the highway Along such a road to lay your head Yet come the decision Next week, we're going to learn more about the historic buildings and architecture in Dulgeville. This week, we visit the historic Arthur's Ye Old Village Hotel that is still the gathering place it has been for generations. As they head in back to New Orleans. Um, actually, it's always been a restaurant or a pub, um, and it's been in the family approximately 20 years. When I first came here, I worked for my mother and father. Uh, my father is recently retired, got out of the business. Now my mother and I own it together. I love the people. I'm, I'm a people person. I love people. Um, I like to interact, stories. I mean, you get a ton of stories from people who come in and out of the restaurant. It's, it's a great family a atmosphere, small community. You know, everyone knows everyone. You walk down the street, everybody's, hi, how are you? You know, it's just very friendly. We stopped in here today at Arthur's and I ordered a Philly steak sandwich and uh, much to my delight, when it came, it had real mushrooms. I found out from the owner that everything here is fresh. When we came here, we found it to be a very, very family oriented restaurant and we found very many fans of the show and as a matter of fact, if you come here and let them know that you're a fan of the show with your entree, you'll be given a free dessert. And the desserts are homemade and they are fantastic. Look at the day, look at the night, look at the way we put up a fight. We can't go on. We head north up Military Road to Salisbury and turn right on Curtis Road. This is Snowmobile Country and home to the Salisbury Ridge Runners Snowmobile Club, New York State's largest. The club members are proud of their organization, which works to help educate snowmobile riders, communicates with landowners, and maintains 100 miles of trails. We are the Salisbury Ridge Runners Snowmobile Club Incorporated. We've been here since 1969. We have 2,400 members presently. We are the largest snowmobile club east of the Mississippi with 99 miles of trails that are state recognized trails and we also have another 35 trail miles of trails that are our own club trails that we maintain. We promote safe snowmobiling, we promote our sport for our members and this coming weekend we're going to have the 13th annual New York State Snowmobile Equipment Show and Seminar. All the equipment dealers that sell the snow grooming equipment come to our facility once a year. And we invite all the other clubs in New York State, which is 236 clubs, to come to our event to have hands-on demonstration of this equipment. We also offer a seminar to people who actually run the equipment for clubs to help them learn the most recent methods to do the best job grooming trails. We here in the Mohawk Valley know how to move snow. We also know how to have a good time and to do it for a good purpose. The Salisbury Ridge Runners and the East Herkimer Snowmobile Club got together a few years ago and they broke the Guinness Book of Records by having the longest line of snowmobiles in a row. There were 700 of them lined up back to back and uh, they raised $30,000 for missing and exploited children. If you'd like to see these amazing grooming machines and many more up close, visit the New York State Snowmobile Trail Grooming Equipment and Seminar in Salisbury this Friday and Saturday. For more information, call Magic Mike at 866-0517 or visit our website. Oh,